All right, there we go. All right, everybody. Had a good weekend. Huh? Welcome back to Vegas. So, when we kicked off, when we kicked off uh, Friday night, I said to you, I said, I feel like this is, uh, <laughs> look, dude, that's, look, that's, look, that's Jeff Ball FaceTiming me from the front row. It's friggin', look at me. Look, where's Paul? There he is. Oh, there, there's Ed. Yeah, there's Eddie. Yeah. Yeah, these are, these are my friends. Yeah. It's so funny. Every time I get up here to do like a big keynote, you know, I got my clip hanger, which y'all should all go get at the store. And, and you know, Jeff and Troy, they're always like, texting or calling me from the front row just to see their face pop up on my phone <laughs> by my crotch. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, look, we, I mean, we've been doing this together, you know, full time for 12 years, and uh, I mean, it, I mean it, it's an absolute blessing. I think so many of us are getting like this real wake-up call about, wow, what we've got our hands on, what we've built together, what we've created together. There's just so much love, you know, for our company, yeah? And, and I think what we all realize is just how unique and how special, how different it is. And what I want to do is try and show you, uh, yes, how unique and different and special it is, but how we're positioned for the future and how I see it fitting, you know, in the world. And, you know, I think that we've got the best leadership team of any company of any kind on the planet, period, bar none. You know, Marcus Seta, I always call him the mailman. You see how he carries a weekend like this? And then, of course, our field. Y'all have always stepped up. I mean, it's just, I mean, I just, I'm so grateful. I mean, I just can't thank you all enough. Because, you know, as the chief visionary officer, as the guy with the vision, the guy with the dream, man, I cannot make it become reality. I just can't do it. I can do my part, but it's like, my gosh, I'm just so thankful to each and every one of you. Yes, we celebrate the leadership a lot, as we should, because they've been the strong, strong foundation. But if you're here for the first time, let me hear you. Hey, I, I, I'll, speak, I'll, speak, I'll speak on their behalf and let you know that we love you, all right? Even though it's, hey, it's your, even though you're brand new, even though it's your first time here, you know, it's like, you're doing your part. In that, you're doing your part. And so you're on the path with us, and we love it. We love it that you stepped on this path with us, and we just want to take you by the hand, and, and we just want to, you know, get on down the road with you. And by, by get on down the road, I mean get on up the mountain. And what's cool, about, what's cool about this mountain, when you get on top of this mountain, you realize, wow, I climbed the right mountain. This is like Mount Everest, and now that I'm at the top of it, with IMD status, or I'm looking down on all the other mountains, and I don't want to climb off of this one and go climb one of those. I'm, I'm happy I climbed the right mountain. So if this, is this your, if this is your first time to ever do direct sales or join a company like this, you know, let me hear you. Wow. Wow. So congratulations, because, I mean... You, you really picked a very special company. If you're like most people, you probably were presented a lot of other opportunities along the way. Am I right? But, but if you're like most of our reps, this is the first one you ever actually said yes to. Because, yeah, because it's travel. 
And now you're going to see how we're getting beyond travel and into, you know, dining and entertainment. So what I'm going to try and do is just help get your mind around, you know, where we're at in this moment in time. Where we were, where we're at, and where we're going next. And, and I just want us to have a common vision, yes, but I also want us to have like a common goal of what's next over the next year, okay? All right. So, I don't, I, we, we've got to all have a big vision together. And when you do have a big vision, when you're thinking big and you're thinking long term, then little problems and issues along the way don't matter. They're, they're just short. Now, if you're not thinking big and you're not thinking long term, every molehill feels like a mountain. You with me? But when you are thinking big and you are thinking long term, you know, this too shall pass. We're going to do, do big things. And so, you know, I've been able to do this for over, you know, 20 years. And in 20 years of doing this full time, I can't even begin to tell you all the ups and downs and things I've been through. People ask me all the time, you know, why don't you write a book? And I'm like, I don't want to write a book. <laughs> I'd have to, have to think about all the crap I've been through. <laughs> <laughs> it, it might demotivate me to keep going, you know? <laughs> so I want to keep going, so I don't want to stop and think about all the obstacles and things I've had to overcome, because I'm still thinking big and long-term and down the road. I'm still focused there. I, I haven't had to. So you, we, you've seen this this weekend where you, you see how fast we outpace. So when you grow that fast, you know, it does stress the systems, like I said the first night when we got here, I think this is the first you know, night, first day of the next 12 years. You've heard some of the leaders say, this is your second chance to be first. Because the way we really feel, the message that we've been sharing on the road from the Superfly tour, and, and, and what I hope that you're hearing is we feel like, from our experience, that this is World Ventures 2.0. This is World Ventures phase two. And I'm telling you, through all the years we've been doing this, people always think that they wish they were there in the beginning. How many of you wish you were there in the beginning? I'll be honest. And on one hand, that's okay. That's okay. If, if you can have a visionary mindset, if you can... Uh, uh, if, you know, you've got to be entrepreneurial minded. And so when we say, before you wish you were there in the beginning, okay, just before you answer, just think about what it takes. You have to be very entrepreneurial minded. When I, was going, when I first was coming up and going to school, there was no entrepreneurship courses. Now you can go to college and, and you can get a degree in entrepreneurship. But when I was coming up, it was all about you go get a business degree. Well, that's, that's for you to learn how to run a business that's already up and running. But when you're in the beginning of something, it's, a, it's, just, a, it's just a different mindset and a different heart set. So do you have the internal fortitude to think that way? So that's an invitation. That's just something for you to bring up to your awareness. Because in a way, when you do join this, you are starting your business from scratch. You do need to have an entrepreneurial mindset. Now, as we transition into World Ventures 2.0 right now, I'm, I'm giving you advice. It's my suggestion that you really meditate on what I'm talking about right now and you learn to say, okay, if this is World Ventures 2.0, I want to go, I want to, I mean, I just want to go ahead and dive on in and I want to have an entrepreneurial mindset and heart set. And then you'll be, you gotta be tough. You gotta be tough mentally and you gotta be tough emotionally. You okay with that? All right. But then, but then you reap the big rewards too. So we've had this big growth curve and you can see that that's pretty steep and some people can say, is that you know, sustainable? Well, if you've built a company and built a model where it's scalable, that helps you become sustainable. But we're gonna talk a little bit more about that but the question is, can you continue that ramp up? And, um, 
yes, I expect to, you know, 4X that real quick. Why? Because of the, the vision we've had, the investments we've been making together, that I'm going to show you that position us for the future to be able to do that. But in order to be able to do it, you got to bring in leadership like we have that, that can backstop that and then go on from there. So did y'all know that Avon was over 100 years old? I mean, look at that. That's old. <laughs> I'm going to show you. They went, they went from like 11, 12 billion down to like 5 or 6 billion. But hey, they're still there and there's still a lot of billions, right? Uh, Amway, I mean, they were up around 12 billion or so. They're down to around 8 billion. They went down a billion last year. Uh, these are companies I admire and I respect. There's Tupperware. There's Mary Kay, there's Herbalife. Herbalife's been on one hell of a ride, can we agree? Bill Ackman tried to short them a billion dollars. Carl Icahn came in and backstop them, but Herbalife's been there. Uh, Mary Kay, Newskin. Now there's few companies that are still founder-led. There's very few companies that are our size and are founder-led. You know, Mary uh, Kay, God rest her soul, she's gone. But she was a huge inspiration to me while she was here. I always said, I want to be the Mary Kay of travel. That was the first goal. All right, boom, got that done. But I'm telling you what I want to do next is pass up. Well, I'll tell you in a minute. So we hit the Global 100, and we, you know, they gave us the award for you know, moving up, and we're and all the stats came out where we're the fastest growing and uh, we're number one in terms of the mid-market, but now we're breaking into that top tier. And so we've got to have top tier leadership to put in top tier systems. And then there's that growth rate that you've seen. Here's the list of the Global 100, down at 69 million, but then all the way at the top, you got Amway up there at over 8 billion. You see us in that first column at the bottom, number 25 in the world. We're number 12 in the US. So, you know, out of that list that, you, that I just showed you of 100, what makes us unique? <laughs> you know, well, let's talk about that a minute. She said, we got Wayne. Yeah, you got so here's the thing, here's the thing. I, I tell you, and, I, and my wife will tell, tell you, when, when I first met her, this is what I told her. I said, I believe God put me here to do this. I said, I can, she was in real estate. I said, I, my dad did real estate, Trammel Crow, made millions, then lost millions. I said, I, can, I know I could get into real estate with you and we could make a lot of money you know, doing real estate, but I, will, I won't be happy. I, will never, I just won't be happy because this is calling me. This is what I believe I was put here to do for people. God bless you too. When we go through storms together, I gotta get on my knees and pray, and I ask, God, is this still your will? God's will be done. God, is this still your will for my life? And, and, and then I always tell people over here, keep the faith, stay the course. Keep the faith, stay the course. God's bigger than any problems we'll ever have. Because yeah. people want to know who's my upline, where do I get charged up, where do I get energized, who do I go, who do I go whine to? <laughs> <laughs> but it's really getting on the knees and just saying, okay, God, I have faith, I'm giving up to you, you're... You're bigger, you're stronger, you, 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 you made everything, you invented everything. You wanna talk about chief visionary officer? <laughs> and I'll tell you this, when I get on my knees and pray, uh, you know, I start with my little sister, 
who I, who I, who I was best friends with and lost, and then I, I worked my way up to my uncle, you know, Anthony, and were, you know, my, uh, my, my grandmother, then my uncle Richard, then my grandfather. But I get up there to, um, you know, Kim Eaton and, and Bob Michael. And, you know, these are reps of ours, and you're not dead until the last memory of you is gone. And so I'm really happy and proud about that Kim Eaton Hero Award. And, uh, you know, there's always so many good candidates. And I'll tell you, there were, there were some, I'm going to make the distinctions, but, you know, we've also got the Rudy Award coming up. And uh, so, so I'll be excited about that one, I think, at Momentum. Give out that first Rudy Award. I think you'll be pleased. Okay. So what makes us special out of this list of 100? Well, how many of those 100 are in the travel industry? How many? Just one. Just one. Why? Why? Because it's harder than it looks. It's way harder than it looks. I know, I knew, I knew what I was going to have to do. That... Chances are, not only no other business person would do, probably no other human would do. And I'm not saying that to, I mean, I'm really, I think about it. Because, that, because I do care about the idea of servant leadership. I do care about my number one job is being a good steward of your hopes and dreams, your family's name, your reputation. I just, I, I, I just promise you, with all my being, I'm grateful to you for choosing us. And you know, by extension, choosing me. So it's like, I'm happy to lay it on the line. That's what I signed up for. And yes, God's still telling me, fight on, keep building. So how many are in the how many in the travel business? None. How many are in dining entertainment? No, other than us, none. How many of them have this worldwide training system with Marcus Seta and our head trainers doing arenas like this all over the world? Twenty of these a year. None. This is exactly what Mark promised, that it, which is a leadership development factory. And I knew when I started the company that the best companies provide the best training. And I, and I know these leaders, and I, and I, I know them when they first started, and, and to watch them get up here and just slay it. Wanda, great job today. A product of the product. Keep the faith, stay the course. It works. We're building leaders, and, and then we just start sending those leaders around the world. Darren, Sarah, God bless you. Product of the product. I mean, I, I just look or across here, and it's just, oh, love it. So, only one to travel, only one dining entertainment, only one with this kind of leadership development factory around the world. Very important. How many of them have been investing in a platform, ecosystem, business model? So you read the books nowadays, and it's like all businesses in the future need to be a platform or ecosystem business. But how many of them are investing that way? None that I know of. So here's what I believe. I believe we're about to do to the entire direct sales industry what Amazon did to the retail industry. It took, I think it, it took up almost like 15 years or so, I think, for Amazon to catch up to Walmart. But when they did, two years later, Walmart, or Amazon doubled Walmart. So that's what it's like to grind it out, grind it out, reinvest, reinvest. People always thought 
Jeff Bezos was crazy and Amazon was crazy and it won't work and why are they reinvesting all this money all the time and doing all this? Oh yeah, who's asking that nowadays? So same thing with us and we're doing this together. I'm not doing it, you know, again, we're doing it. I just keep thinking about your future. I keep thinking about your kid's future. This was designed to be a multi-generational business that you can hand on to your kids. So we, we've all got to be dedicated to innovation. So here's the Global 100 list again. And you see us down there. Look at the companies we passed up that are less than 25. I mean, there's some, I mean, golly, Arbonne's been around, AdvoCare, Team National, Market America's been around forever, Beachbody, Isogenics, great people, the Coopers, great company. Uh, but we got, some, we got some ground to make up. Look at who we're going to catch next. I see like USANA on there, all these. So let me talk about the companies that I want to catch next. I believe we can pass up USANA, great company. I believe we can pass up Primerica, New Skin, Tupperware. And let me show you why. This is real logical. I'm not a hype person. Anybody who's ever knows me or built with me or anything, I'm not a hype person. I don't like hype. I just have a plan and I go execute the plan. So here we are at number 12. And there's USANA at 10, but you see Tupperware at number five in the US. You see Mary Kay, or, 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 or I'm sorry, New Skin at number six. Tupperware at number five. That's all it takes. Two and a quarter billion. So we know what it's like to get to that one billion mark, right? Okay, now when, when you all start adding a bunch of restaurants and swiping and we get paid instantly, did you see that that Eddie just showed you? Pay within the app? That means you get paid right now. That means all of a sudden, once, once, you're, once you can go eat and your people can go eat and we get paid right now, as soon as the transaction happens, you know what we can do now that we got our money instantly? We can, we can start multi-leveling. I mean, it's, I think it's cool that Amazon bought Whole Foods. There's Uber Eats. There's things like that. They ain't doing this. How, how much money do you make from uh, Amazon buying Whole Foods? How much do you get paid for that? Where's your opportunity? You with me? So how do we get there? We've, 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 look, we're not, we, we're not officially in like six of the top 10 direct sales countries. And I want you to understand the size, you know, what countries are big. Okay, what's out there? I really think China is two or three times bigger than America. It's just not like reported that way. So I, I, I challenge that. So yes, the US is huge, especially when you got something new like this. You leave here this weekend, you've got a new story to tell. And, it, and, and I'm telling you, that's what your job description is, is to go out there and tell the story. You can put your story with our story, but that's what you do. You're a storyteller. And you want to be telling your story, yes, three times a day, five times a day. You got to set goals, okay? And if you're not doing it three times a day, you, you kind of need to feel like that I'm not really doing the job. I'm not going to get the traction. You can make some extra money, yes. And we love people that just want to make a little bit of extra money. But I know that a lot of people aspire to get full time. And I know that most people, from my experience in 20 years, I knew that if I got to 1,000 a week, I would go full time. Because that's what I was earning at my job, right? Shoot. My goal, when I first started, was to make 400 a week, which was less than 1,000 a week I was earning at my job. I figured I'll eat peanut butter jelly sandwiches, I'll eat some ramen noodles. You know? I'll go full-time and build it up from there. 
So I was willing to do that. But so what you got to be able to do is go tell the story and just whatever that number is for you to where you want to go full time. But we recommend you do it smartly. You know, be out of debt, you know, all kinds of things. So once we open up Japan, Brazil, Mexico, France, you just, so you just got to know that, that all these countries are in our sights. And we have a plan and we have a strategy. Now we're not there yet, follow our lead. We'll keep you updated. All I'm telling you is, by the end, as, as this year progresses, I expect to flip on the switch. And, um, uh, but again, I'm not, I'm not saying go outrun me or anything. What I'm saying is there's a plan here that diversifies us around the world so we balance ourselves around the world in every region of the world. Right now, we don't have a big footprint in Central and South America and a lot of Spanish-speaking people in our company. But we will soon. Okay. Now, I, I want you to understand how we look at this. And it's, it's other companies, you, get, you know, you can't serve two masters. So would y'all rather me serve shareholders or stakeholders? You, you understand? Okay, me too. I, I, like, I like serving and serving, you know, stakeholders. Because then we're close, we're friends, man, I get to do it. But I'm telling you, we're in public or something, it's a totally different animal. So... These are the stakeholders that we got to think about. Yes, here's you, our sales reps, then of course, you know, our customers. Y'all, what do y'all care most about a lot of times? Comp plan. That's normal. <laughs> As a sales rep, you care about comp plan. What we're trying to do for you, just so you know our game plan, is to give you more revenue streams so that you have more wallet share. So even though, like, when we, die, when we have whatever margin we need to run a company that allows us to take care of all the other stakeholders, we can do it in such a way that you make more money. And that's what you're seeing this weekend. So this weekend, we showed you product value. Number one, Eddie, the love bomb. Eddie, the math is, if you're going to do one trip or more, platinum makes all the financial sense in the world. We can break it down for you that if you're going to do one trip or more, platinum is what you should have, mathematically speaking. Without question. The math makes sense. You all, with the enhancements that we just showed you and um, the points and everything, y'all should leave here and really believe in and sell our platinum membership. If you do, you understand you get a pay raise. If you do, what you do, you duplicates, right? So our platinum isn't much more. It's very affordable. People can start at platinum, experience the benefits. If they ever want to downgrade and go to gold or something else, they can. I'm just telling you from my experience how I led as, as a rep. So I always put it in front of the person and say, do what makes most sense for you. But here's what I've seen. Because whenever I'm going platinum and you're in my group, I want to be able to hang out with you and us have the same experience. I don't want to have like this better experience because I paid a little bit more money than you. Now, if you refer four and pay no more, so there's a whole training around that, how to do that. So for you, we wanted to enhance the comp plan. We enhanced the product for the customers. We've, we've built the team and our team is making the product better. Our team is building the infrastructure to support you and your comp plan and all your new revenue streams. Josh Payne, can you give it up? To Josh Payne, our new CEO. But it's also our CIO and all his years of experience. I mean, we're hiring some really good people. It's also Simon Chatfield. He's another great guy that, that built booking engines and did work with Amex and all this kind of stuff. Then we got a, uh, another guy, Dirk, that's like just, just a, a, a numbers ninja. 
I mean, it's unbelievable. We got, we're stacked, I'm telling you. Got the best team in place that we've ever had. And that's important if you're going to go where we say we're going. So that corporate team has to interface a lot with all our vendors and suppliers, all the, all the uh, travel companies, all the companies that make your websites work, you know, just every aspect of this business. And we have a lot of vendors and a lot of suppliers. I mean, when you're doing, you know, a billion dollars a year and, and three, two and three billion, it's a lot of people that it takes to run this thing around the world. They too are stakeholders. Give it up for all the people like Monaco back here and his whole crew, Mark Asetta, his whole crew, all the people backstage. All our ambassadors. I mean, these events don't just happen. There is a lot of work and a lot of people. Oh, my God. And give it up for this guy, Benjamin, right here, man. Stand up, Benjamin. Look. He's, a, he's such a stud. Been with that forever. Look at it. Oh, he's so awesome. Love everybody. Okay. If, if we do all those things and we become a successful company and a successful business and you're plugged in the system and you become a success, we want you, we want to, we as a company and you, we want to go from success to significance, right? So, I mean, I'm just so happy about our foundation and the culture that we've built of, of yes, we want you to succeed and then give back all along the way. And our leaders have led by example for all these years, and they've continued to grow them, you know, earn more and go quadruple IMD and things like that and double IMD, but they've always given back along the way. And when you join us, that's a part of our culture. Yes, we want to help you make more, and we don't require anything, but we want to strongly encourage you to give more because it's in giving that you receive, right? So we have that. The, the things we're doing around the world, uh, over 100 bottle schools, the, the service excursions we do, it's just incredible. So, you know, I was on Necker with Richard Branson, and uh, that, that picture on the, far, on the far right, I stayed right there in that unit. Uh, there's, I've been in that swimming pool up on the left. I've been right there where, you know, and so here he is. Now, he's a billionaire. He'll be okay. I think he'll rebuild. He probably had insurance. But I'm telling you, man, look at what's going on in the world with all these storms. I mean, Puerto Rico, absolutely. I mean, Puerto Rico is in World Ventures. And, and I have, you know, I love the idea of working with Gwyneth or whatever, and let's figure out what's the best way to go down there safely and help and contribute. I know that's in us. But you know, we had Hurricane Harvey and Irma, and it's just, I mean, I know we're watching the news and just, I mean, news nowadays is like reality TV. For, I mean, it's just unbelievable. Don't get distracted, go build, focus. Focus on the news or focus on building the business. You focus on building this business, you can actually help and do something. Yeah. You ain't helping them sitting at home watching the news. Let's get you in this and, and, and get, let's, let's get you plugged in and where we can actually do something. So in the past, I've always talked about being scalable and sustainable. But I want to throw a new word at you, given all these storms that are going on. Because storms happen in, in, in life, in terms of natural disasters. Storms happen in your personal lives. Storms happen in businesses. I want to just talk to you and get this word on the front of your mind. Resilience. Yes, we have the most talented leadership team of any company in the direct sales industry, and I think of any company on the planet. So it's one thing to be talented. It's another thing to be resilient. And a lot of your leaders right now are proving themselves to be very resilient too. That's an invitation to you to yes, focus on getting more and more talented, but also be resilient. Because I've been doing this 20 years and I've seen lots of storms come and go. I've seen competition come and go. I've seen all kinds of things happen in the downlines. I'm just telling you, you need to be mentally and emotionally tough and need to be resilient. So what does that look like? When the eye of the storm 
or the storm's coming, you know, nowadays you get some advance warning. You can, you know, prepare. But sometimes you can't. The question is, what kind, of, what kind of tree do you relate to more? Are you the mighty oak or, or a palm tree? So, I mean, if, if I just ask, I, th I think a lot of people, yes, absolutely respect and admire the mighty oak. It's strong. I mean, it goes, I mean, it just stands its ground up against the storm, right? It just holds its ground. And hopefully you're strong enough, depending on the size of the storm that comes. Sometimes that stubborn, mighty oak just breaks. I just invite you to think about how can you flow and bend with the times. Do you bend or you break? Do you bend or you break? There's a lot of people out there that are suffering in Puerto Rico and throughout the Caribbean and everything like that. I mean, they lost everything. And so... Absolutely, let's, let's pray for those people. Here is a team, a part, yes, at times we stand our ground, and at other times we've got to learn to be resilient. When I first started networking, you know, over 20 years ago, you would, there was way, people always want to make extra money. There's in tough times and tough storms and all this, people get motivated, they need to make extra money. Can we agree? And right now around the world, there are a lot of countries, a lot of places people need to make extra money, they wanna make extra money. When I was coming along, you, you know, they didn't have the internet back then. They didn't have smartphones. A lot of people would imagine, okay, I'm gonna have a nine to five job, and then after I get off my job, I'm gonna go to work at one of the convenience stores or gas stations. So it was either like 7-Eleven, stop and go, you told them. And you'd pin a button on that says, don't shoot. <laughs> so people want to make extra money, but a lot of times that was their choice for a lot of people. <laughs> pin a button on that says, don't shoot. Remember that? Also, Airbnb. It, you know, that didn't stand for air, like airline, airplane. Air stand, it was air bed and breakfast. Literally, air bed, like a blow up bed on the floor. That's how it started. Because people needed to be able to pay the rent and their mortgage. And, and they had an extra bedroom or space on the floor. So like, okay, I'm having a hard time making rent. I'll just rent out a spot on my floor. That's how it started. So coming out of here. I think you all can double your earnings. The U.S. was doing about 30% or so of platinums. I think y'all can flip it and go 70% now. If you do, what happens to your commission check? And because of the platform, as you understand it, you're going to be able to go, you know, eat and earn. You're going to be able to get these points. And you're going to be able to apply those points like now. You're going to be able to sign up a member and they're going to be able to use that and get a member experience, a member benefit now. If they're using it, they're using the membership, they're using the product, they keep it. So retention goes up. I think everything that we're laying out for you, you're going to see it happening where you're going to make more sales faster on the front, they're going to use it in the middle, and you're going to keep them longer on the back. What does that do to your check? This, that's good thinking. And from good thinking comes good actions, and good actions come good results. I encourage you to walk out of here with good thinking. So that's it. Platinum, DTL, you're going to see us now open it up again where we start signing up restaurants around the world. You're going to see more and more restaurants populated into the app. And then, as we get all those restaurants added where we go get points and cha-ching, 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 then we're going to start encouraging the restaurant owners to give us the member experience. Remember I showed you that um, the wheel of all the stakeholders? To me, that's kind of like, you know, one of these spinners. 
And what I want your buy-in, what I want your support on is, remember I said there's the sales reps and there's the member customer and there's the employees and there's the suppliers. All those are like one of these legs on the spinner. And if you want this thing to spin nice and smooth, don't you need to take care of all the stakeholders? So what I'm asking you to do is remember this analogy and, and, and have a business mind, an entrepreneurial mind of what it takes to be scalable and sustainable and resilient. Thank you. God bless you.